Okay, another what's inside video. Uh, two circuit boards here. One's a sensor. It's called the BMP180. This is just an Arduino uh, using to uh, control it. Um, this little silver dot here is actually the sensor, and we'll zoom in in a second, but just for completeness, uh, uh, the sensor measures uh, temperature and uh, barometric pressure. And if I change it, for example, using a, a dust can, I'll just pop up the serial window printing out the uh, pressure and temperature. And you can see that when I put a little pressure onto the uh, sensor, Two things happen. Of course, the temperature dropped because uh, an expanding gas is generally cool, and of course the pressure went up because, well, he's blowing more pressure onto it. Um, and that's, of course, not the purpose of this video. The purpose is actually to take a look at uh, this sensor again, a really inexpensive sensor uh, with a complete digital interface. So undoubtedly there are a lot of things packed inside uh, this little silver can. Okay, here's a close-up of the actual sensor assembly. It's a small little circuit board. Uh, the heart of it is this little silver can. Uh, let me start uh, another macro f uh, photograph just to get even a bigger view of it. You can see a little hole in it, and of course that's uh, quite unique. Uh, most hermetically sealed cans uh, don't let air in and out, but of course if you're building a barometric pressure sensor, that's exactly what you need. Uh, let me also pop up the data sheet. Uh, Bosch uh, is apparently the originator of the sensor. I don't know if it's a knockoff or it truly is a Bosch sensor. Uh, because, uh, again, it was astonishingly inexpensive off at uh, eBay. Um, in fact, let me pop up the eBay listing, uh, and then you can see it. And <laughs> uh, not much money, obviously. So, uh, And really, again, just excellent support for Arduino. Uh, if you're doing some sort of sensor, it's really hard to beat this platform sometimes in terms of uh, implementation simplicity. Okay, what well, was a challenging package to get into? I'm going to insert a whole series of photographs because uh, the movie function of my camera actually can't zoom into such tiny details, uh, but in still mode it's okay. Uh, the first photograph here is the uh, the chip itself. I've taken it off the board, and uh, the top is the metal can, of course, and then the bottom is what's known as a substrate or a circuit board. And uh, the first thing I was hoping to do is just simply lift the metal can off the substrate. And I don't know what they use for solder, but it uh, always must have a very high melting point because uh, I gave it all I could, could with the uh, hot air tool that I have, and uh, it didn't melt. So eventually I just uh, took the dies out uh, through an acid decapsulation. So uh, if you look at the slide here, there's uh, two dies, uh, very small indeed. Uh, they're about a millimeter on a square. And there's some uh, fiberglass cloth, and there's no discretes, no inductors, no capacitors, uh, no resistors on this design, just two pieces of silicon. Let me pop up uh, the micro photograph of the two dies. Uh, the die on the left there is a MEMS, a microelectromechanical system, which is uh, as neat as it sounds. Uh, basically, it's a little tiny bit of silicon with an uh, under etching to create a diaphragm, which they can use to measure pressure. And those four wires on top are a gold. They're the bond wires, and they'll bond off to the uh, other die. Uh, let me just uh, zoom into the die marking, actually. And uh, if you read those die markings, they can actually help you uh, uh, figure out who um, made the chip that they use for traceability. Uh, no surprise. And uh, in fact, you can actually find a teardown on iFixit.com where this exact same sensor is being used uh, for a cellular telephone. Uh, the die on the right, uh, microcontroller, uh, here's some interesting photographs. Uh, you often see uh, this uh, sort of herringbone pattern on top of dies. It's a metallization layer. It tends to hide what's below uh, the structures below, which, of course, is where you probably want to, would go next if you're into analyzing silicon. You'd actually want, of course, to uh, de-layer the chip now as well. Um, and that kind of veers into actually some very specialized territory. So I won't be going there for a while, I don't think, but... Uh, Again, a really neat example, uh, a little tiny uh, device here with two pieces of very sophisticated silicon, um, uh, almost zero cell price, uh, trivial to use interface, so um, tons of really neat sensors in this world.